When you imagine early Homo sapiens, what do you see? A pale-skinned hunter wrapped in furs? A figure like us, but somehow whiter, more European? That's the image we've inherited through textbooks, museums, even movies. But what if that image is wrong? What if the real first humans looked nothing like we imagined? This is the story of how modern humans really looked and how science shattered the myth of pale-skinned prehistory. For centuries, Western science portrayed early humans through a colonial lens. Explorers and anatomists imagined the past in their own image. Even today, many museum reconstructions still reflect that bias. Why? Because for a long time, we had no skin to study, only bones. And bones don't carry melanin, so artists guessed. And those guesses mirrored their own expectations, their own faces. But the truth of our origins wasn't in the bones, it was hidden in our DNA. Homo sapiens first appeared in Africa over 300,000 years ago. And Africa is not a land of gentle sunlight. It's harsh and intense. The UV radiation, there's no joke. So what happens when skin is exposed to that much sunlight? It needs protection. And nature provides that through melanin, the pigment that gives skin its color. High melanin equals dark skin. A built-in shield against the sun's damage. Even before Homo sapiens, our ancestors had evolved dark skin. As body hair vanished, skin became the new front line against the sun, and melanin became our armor. When scientists eventually figured out how to extract and sequence ancient human DNA, the veil began to lift. What they discovered rewrote everything. Only some populations with genes primarily responsible for lighter skin were living in parts of Scandinavia and Western Asia, while others didn't have them. The big shock came with Cheddar Man, a 10,000-year-old skeleton from Britain. DNA revealed he had dark skin, possibly even darker than most people in sub-Saharan Africa today, and blue eyes. That alone shattered the myth of ancient whiteness. It turned out that pale skin wasn't a default setting. It was a late adaptation, a regional change, not a universal one. But if you still imagine ancient Europeans as pale-skinned, let's talk about Utzi. You might know him as the Iceman, or Europe's most famous natural mummy. Discovered in the Alps in 1991, frozen for over 5,000 years, Utzi was thought to represent a typical early European dweller. For decades, his reconstruction showed a man with pale skin and straight hair, sometimes even with blue or green eyes. But in 2023, everything changed. A groundbreaking study resequenced his genome, and this time with far better preservation and tools. And what they found stunned researchers. Utzi had much darker skin than anyone had imagined. In fact, his skin tone was likely comparable to modern South Asians or North Africans, deeply pigmented and adapted for sun exposure. He also had dark eyes and no steppe ancestry, meaning he descended from early Anatolian farmers, people who still carried much of that ancient melanin-rich heritage, and he was bald. The paleness we imagined for Utsi was never in his DNA. It was in ours, in our assumptions. If you want the full story behind this icy mystery, we have a dedicated video all about Utsi, his injuries, his murder, and his reconstructed life. You can check it out right after this one. But what matters here is this, even by 3300 BCE, early Europeans like Utsi still carry the legacy of our darker skinned ancestors. The light skin tones we associate with Europe were still on their way. But Homo sapiens weren't the only humans to walk across Ice Age Europe. When we arrived, we were the newcomers. And the land wasn't empty, it was already home to another kind of human, Neanderthals. They had lived there for over 300,000 years, surviving in cold, dark environments with long winters and very little sunlight. And that environment changed them. Genetic evidence tells us that Neanderthals had pale skin not because they were more advanced, but because they had to adapt. 
In low UV regions, dark skin blocks sunlight, and with it, vitamin D production. Without enough vitamin D, bones soften, children die. So over time, light skin evolved, not for beauty or superiority, but for survival in places where the sun barely rose. Neanderthals didn't start pale, they became pale. Their skin lightened as a response to the Ice Age world. And when Homo sapiens finally reached Europe, around 45,000 years ago, we were still dark-skinned, dark like our ancestors in Africa, built for heat, not snow. But over the next 30,000 years, something changed. We stayed, we settled, and we began to evolve. White skin, as we think of it today, didn't appear until much later. The versions of the genes primarily responsible for lighter skin pigmentation in modern Europeans arrive in Europe on the back of two waves of migration thousands of years after Cheddar Man died, one associated with Near Eastern farmers and another with pastoralists from the Pontic steppe. In addition, there seems to have been ongoing natural selection favoring lighter skin pigmentation in Europe over the last 9,000 years probably in relation to an increased need for UV-induced vitamin D synthesis in the skin. It wasn't a single moment. It was a slow mosaic of migrations, interbreeding, and natural selection. So what we call white skin, it's not ancient. It's not original. It's a recent invention, a regional adaptation, just a few thousand years old. And yet, for so long, we assumed it was the default. But the default was always dark. So what did the first Homo sapiens actually look like? They likely had broad noses, dark, richly pigmented skin, tightly curled hair, eyes as dark as the night sky. They were built for heat, for sunlight, for endurance. They looked less like a Viking and more like someone you might see in Ethiopia or Sudan or Nigeria because they were Africans and Africa is where all of us, every single modern human began. Pale skin. That's not original, that's the mutation, a recent adaptation to life in far northern latitudes. But why does this matter? Because the way we picture the past shapes how we see ourselves today. The myth of a pale prehistoric world fed ideas of racial superiority, that civilization started with light skin, that white came first. But the science tells a different story, a more honest one. Correcting the image of early humans isn't about politics, it's about truth. It's about seeing the full picture, the one that includes all of us. So the next time you picture early humans, don't imagine a caveman with pale skin and a fur tunic. Picture someone darker, someone strong, sun-kissed, walking under the African sky. Picture your ancestors, picture you.